Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little, and welcome to the third installment of my brand new podcast, Weekly Poker Hand, where I go over Poker Hand that I played recently, and I discuss some of the thought processes that go into the hand. This is a multi-table tournament. I believe it is the Sunday Second Chance on Poker Stars, and I actually think I made a few mistakes in this hand. And right here, preflop, is my very first one. There's a raise from the hijack, a call on the button, and the small blind calls, all for 60. We are all 3,000 chips deep. And I make it 300 with pocket kings. And in this spot, I think I actually make it a little bit too large. Even though the Sunday second chance is generally a pretty soft tournament, which means players will call larger raises, I think we're still better off just raising a little bit smaller here, something like 240. You really want to keep your opponents in with hands that are drawing very thin, like king-10 offsuit and you know 9-6 suited, hands like that. And I think if we raise to 300, they will tend to fold those a lot of the time. So I think I need to make it just a touch smaller here. And the hijack and the button call and the small blind finds a fold. It comes 9-6-2 with two hearts, and I bet 760 into the 960 pot. And again, I think this is another mistake. I think I, I bet way too large again. Notice that betting this size, all it really does is set me up for a pretty decent sized turn shove. But in reality, when I'm this shallow stacked behind, if I bet something like 400 on the, t on the flop, I can then bet maybe 700 on the turn, then shove the river very comfortably. And by then my opponent will be very roped into the hand because he'll only have you know, 1,100 left or something. So when I bet 760 here, you always have to think about what's going to happen if my opponent calls and what hands am I trying to get him to continue with. Obviously, if he has me beat, he's, he's going to continue in the hand, and we, we're just going to lose every time. And you don't really need to worry about being beat in spots like this because we really only lose to sets and exactly 9-6. And even then, I think 9-6 is really pushing it. So for the all practical purposes, we have to assume that we have the nuts. So what's going to happen if he has a flush draw? which certainly is an option. He could easily have ace, queen of hearts, ace, jack of hearts, ace, ten of hearts. Can, uh, can't have king, ten. He could have queen, jack, queen, ten, queen, nine, maybe jack, ten of hearts. So against that, those hands, I would like to bet large to charge them, but it really doesn't matter that much because we're probably going to get it all in anyways. Because if I bet, say, 400, they're just going to shove on me. Um, and against the nine... The same thing holds true. I do want to bet small on the flop so that I can sort of sucker them in on the turn of the river. So right here, I do think that 760 is not the optimal bet at all. The hijack shoves, and it folds to me. Of course, I'm going to call with the pocket kings on the 962 board with two hearts. And my opponent shows up with queen seven of hearts. And... I mean, this is a spot where, obviously I'm never folding, but the problem with this hand is that I made two very incorrect bet sizes looking back, and my opponent's hand was not in the range that I gave him. And in spots like this, you really need to critique yourself whenever you put your opponent on a range and your range is inaccurate. So even though I did sort of put him on a flush draw, or at least I put the flush draw in his range, I did not put queen seven of hearts in his range, and because of that, I did not accurately assess the player. And if you don't accurately assess this player, you will find yourself making more incorrect reads in the future. So anytime you see yourself like flabbergasted by what your opponent shows up with, realize who you're playing against, take notes on them, and adjust your range next time. So even though I want all the money here, there's still a lot to learn. You know, there are plays, there are spots where you lose your whole stack and play the hand perfectly in every way, and then there are spots where you win a whole stack and you play pretty poorly and this is one of those examples I think. So always review your play and always try to improve. If you go to free poker, I'm sorry, if you go to weeklypokerhand.com uh, you'll be able to see my analysis of my opponent's play in this hand which should certainly be interesting. So check it out at weeklypokerhand.com and while you're at it, pick up my brand new poker book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker Volume 1. I discuss how I play basically every hand from every stack size, and I teach you how to think like I think, which is 
going to be good for your poker game on average. <laughs> so uh, check that out. You can get that on Amazon.com. Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker. And for the video of this podcast as well as the analysis of my opponent's play, check out WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thank you very much for watching.